Well, good morning, and welcome to this pre-offer conference for the State of Hawaii, Modernizing the Department of Taxation Technology. And my name is Kevin Takeyasu with the State Procurement Office. Also assisting in the pre-offer conference is Joshua Lee and Robert Su, who are with the Department of Taxation Office, and Stacy Kalinomoku with the State Procurement Office, who will also be covering the High Pro section. Now this meeting for this pre-offer conference scheduled for approximately one and a half hour, but time may vary depending on how many questions we receive. All right, this is the slide of our agenda for this morning. You can see the names of the presenters, myself and Stacy, also with the State Procurement Office, they may be other uh, representatives that may help field some of the questions, and Joshua Lee with the State, De State of Hawaii Department of Taxation. I do want to mention that during the questions and answers that other representatives again may help. Okay. And you can see the following bullet points that will be discussed in the pre-offer conference. Okay, before we get started, I wanted to review a few housekeeping items and let you know how you can participate in today's webinar event. Since this system is still new to us, please bear with us if we run into some technical difficulties. Here we're looking at an example of Adobe Connect participant view, which is made up of two parts, the share pod on the right, which allows you to see everything the presenter will share on your screen, and the question and answer pod on the left. Now, during the pre-offer conference, you have the ability to send questions to our webinar staff to the question pane. Just simply type in your question and press enter. Okay, during the presentation, we may ask you to answer a question, raise your hand, this option is located at the drop down at the top of the screen. You can also provide me feedback, for example, to speak louder, softer, etc. Okay, here we go with the introduction. The State Procurement Office is requesting proposals for services and technology to assist the Department of Taxation in its efforts to modernize processes to improve services to the community and to identify, manage, and collect delinquent taxes owed to the state of Hawaii. Now the respective statute that rules that governs requests for proposals is HRS 103D-303 and the HARS, HAR 3-122, subchapter 6. Now both of these can be located on our state procurement website under reference. Okay, here you can see the point of contact, which is myself. The procurement officer is authorized to enter into a contract resulting from this RFP. The procurement officer is Mara Smith. Now for today's pre-offer conference, the questions and answers are not part of the RFP. The information provided is merely informational. The third bullet is very important. All formal inquiries questions shall be submitted through HYPRO, and in the order to submit questions, you must be registered in HYPRO. Please note that the responses to vendor's question will not be immediate, will not be immediately after the vendor submits it, but at a later date, which I will talk to in the following slide. And Stacy will also cover information you need to know to submit your proposal through HYPRO. Just some definitions to be aware of as we are providing you an overview of the RFP process. The prospe prospective offer is a vendor that has registered in HYPRO. A priority listed offer is when a proposal is determined to be acceptable or potentially acceptable. After the proposal is evaluated 
Applied Evaluation Committee. And the last definition, offer is when you submit an offer proposal through the HYPRO system. Significant RFQ date. Now here you have the important dates to note, and then these can be found in the main document of the RFP, which is section 1.6. As we already ready released the RFP, and so we are now holding the pre-offer conference. And so the next important date is the due date to submit questions, which is April 25th. And note the time of 2 o'clock p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. Uh, it is important that if you have any questions that you submit them through the HYPRO by that date and time, and the state will respond by Mar May 16th at 2 o'clock. Now this date may change depending the number of questions that are submitted from the vendors. If the date needs to be changed, it will be done through an addendum. All the questions and answers will be released by HYPRO. And the deadline for submittal of the offers is June 12th at 2 o'clock p.m., again, which may be subject to change. And Stacy will go over how to submit through HYPRO, and it's important to note the time difference and after all the proposals are received and evaluated, and if there is still a need for discussion, then that information will be provided along with the best and final offers as an addendum uh, to those that have qualified as the priority list vendors. Important to read the red information, the wording in the box there. Okay. Just to be clear, the submittals of questions, responses to questions and proposals shall be received through the Hawaii Start, excuse me, Hawaii State E-Procurement System, or HYPRO, by the date and time indicated here. Proposals submitted after the date, deadline and or not through the HYPRO shall not be considered for award. Okay. Is there any questions so far? No questions, Kevin. Thank you. All right, just a little overview of the RFP process. On April 4, 2014, SBO released RFP 13-013-SW. RFP and attachment documents can be viewed on HYPRO, and all questions and responses shall be transmitted through HYPRO. Now, once the proposals are received, they shall be evaluated by the Evaluation Committee and shall be based on a criteria set in the RFP. Now, if discussions are needed, a priority list shall be generated, and the proposal shall be rated as acceptable, potentially acceptable, and unacceptable. And those proposals rated as acceptable and potentially acceptable may be invited for discussions, presentations, and demonstrations. Now the list shall be no less than three offers who make up the priority list. And after the discussions, state may call for a best and final or baffle. A baffle will be scored based on the same criteria stated in the RFP and award if will be made through the highest scored offer. Awards will be made through the HYPRO and will be posted on the state procurement award recording site. Now, the request for debriefing by non-selected offers shall be submitted to the procurement officer within three working days after the award is made. And a protest may be filed within five working days after award is made or after debriefing, if any. All non-confidential information will be made available for public inspection after award is made. Okay, at this time, I would like to turn it over to Joshua Lee from the State of Hawaii Department of Taxation. Hello, I'm Joshua Lee, the Program Special Assistant for the Tax System Modernization Effort at the Hawaii Department of Taxation. 
I'm here to provide a broad overview of select areas of the RFP at the State Procurement Office's request. Starting on page 14 of our RFP, our RFP describes high-level objectives for this procurement. Through this procurement, the Department of Taxation seeks to meet our high volume and high availability processing and compliance needs, simplify and accelerate the process of making tax forms, business rule, rate, and other annual tax law changes, accommodate the shift to electronic filing and payments, improve our scanning, data capture, document storage, and content management capabilities, enhance our utilization of robust compliance strategies, provide the data and processing infrastructure for decision analytics, improve core process performance monitoring, management, and reporting, re-engineer business processes and embrace organizational change management, and finally, improve our application interoperability and data exchange capabilities. The scope of work covered by this RFP includes requests, includes requests for complete solutions, including the provision and installation of necessary hardware and software, the configuration of business rules, process mapping, integration, and self-service functionality. The RFP also includes requests for related business process engineering, organizational change management, implementation, documentation, data cleansing, and data migration services. Our RFP divides products and services requested into three functional areas that are described starting on page 12. Offerers can bid on one or more of these functional areas. The first functional area is the core tax system. This functional area is made up of components that seamlessly combine to form an integrated tax solution that includes physical mail processing, document management, document and taxpayer returns processing, taxpayer registration and demographics, correspondence, cashiering, accounting, reporting, case management, and workflow management. The second functional area is data warehouse and analytics. This functional area is comprised of hardware and software for a data warehouse, as well as business intelligence capabilities that allow us to transform raw data into meaningful and useful information and reports to help the Department of Taxation make better decisions and collect more revenue. The final functional area is customer support. This functional area is comprised of various components that improve the department's ability to educate, service, and respond to customer inquiries. It includes a web e-filing portal, tax service stations, an interactive voice response system, and a customer relationship management system. The RFP gives details about the evaluation process starting on page 32. The following table is on that page and shows the total possible points that can be allocated to different categories of evaluation criteria. The RFP provides details about what the selection committee will be looking at when assigning points to these categories. Non-cost categories include functional requirements, technical requirements, value-added services, offer qualifications, and implementation. The cost of each proposal is converted to points using a formula given on page 35 and represents 20% of the total points possible. Okay, the next several slides will be dealing with Hypro and Stacy will be speaking in regards to Hypro. Okay, hello everyone. Sorry, we were having some technical difficulties. I hope everyone can hear me now. Um, like I was saying before, my name is Stacy Kalinamoku. I'm a purchasing specialist with the State Procurement Office. And in the next couple of slides, I'll be going over some helpful information about our e-procurement system, Hypro. First of all, offers interested in responding to the solicitation must be registered on Hypro in order to participate. So to register, just go to http colon slash slash hiepro.hawaii.gov. And on the Hypro landing page, if you need help registering, on the right-hand side, 
under help for information, you will find a vendor registration video, as well as a vendor registration guide that shows you step-by-step -step instructions on how to register on Hypro, how to set up your commodity code profile, and how to submit an offer with attachments. Okay, for vendors, all you have to do is click on vendor registration. Registering, registering on Hypro is a two-step process. You must first have an eHawaii.gov account, and if you do not have one, then here's where you can create one. Once you've created your account, you need to log in and register as a vendor to complete the registration process. Please note that Hypro does allow multiple people from the same company to register separately as long as each person creates an eHawaii.gov account with a unique email address as email will serve as the person's Hypro user ID. Okay, so let me just take you back to the presentation. So once you log in, you will need to enter your federal employer identification number, your FEIN, and you must be sure to use your legal business name as the award may only be awarded to the vendor submitting the offer, and you must have the authority to submit offers for your business. Okay, when registering, vendors create an NIGP commodity code profile by selecting the commodity codes representing the goods, services, or construction they wish to sell to the state. The commodity codes you select will determine the email notifications sent to you and the solicitations that will show up on your vendor dashboard. I just want to show you guys real quick that as a vendor, you can actually do a public search on Hypro by just clicking on the public search button. And if you know the information for a particular solicitation you want to look up, then you can go ahead and enter the information here. If not, you can just click on search to see what's on, on the street. For the purpose of this pre-proposal conference, we want to focus on the moderniz modernizing the Department of Taxation's technology RFP. And to access it, all you have to do is click on the solicitation number. And then to see what commodity codes are linked to this one, just click on the line item tab and the commodity codes will pop up. And please note that not having the commodity code in your profile does not prevent a vendor from logging in and responding to a solicitation. But this does not add the commodity code to your profile automatically. So basically, if you're interested, be sure to add the codes to your profile. Okay, to select commodity codes, use the code table and type in keywords associated with your industry. The fewer words, the better, so when the list pops up, simply select your codes. Once the code is selected from the menu, click Add. After you set up your vendor profile account, feel free to update your commodity code profile at any time by adding new codes or removing current codes that do not apply to you anymore. Okay, Hypro fees. Okay, the good news first. There is no fee to register on Hypro, and there is no fee to submit an offer to a solicitation. As a vendor, the only fee you will need to pay is if you are awarded. An award resulting from a solicitation, if any, shall be conducted through Hypro and subject to a mandatory 0.75% transaction fee of the award not to exceed $5,000 for that award. This transaction fee shall be based on the initial award amount, and the vendor shall be responsible for payment of the fee to Hawaii Information Consortium, LLC, or HIC, the vendor administering the Hypro Upon Award. Okay, please read the specification and instructions carefully before submitting your offer. You may change your response in Hypro as many times as you like before the submittal due date and time. All you need to do is click on Edit Response button to edit your old offer, then click on the Submit Offer button to submit a new response. After you submit your new offer, please verify. Make sure you get a pop-up when you submit. I would even go ahead and log in again to make sure everything is correct, your attachments, etc. And you should also get an email. You can read the rest of the information on the slide at your leisure, but I just wanted to point out a few things. If your files are large, over 10 megabytes in size, please split them into smaller files not larger in size than 10 megabytes. Any information or material that you consider to be confidential should be clearly marked when submitted in or with your offer. Lastly, please do not wait until the last minute to submit your offer. Once the submittal deadline has passed, you will not be able to enter or change anything. The Submit Offer button must be pressed for an offer to be considered, so please make sure your response is submitted, not just saved. Check your vendor dashboard to see if your offer is submitted too. Okay, some helpful Hypro hints. Note the instructions for entering pricing in Hypro are unique to this solicitation. If you respond to other solicitations on Hypro, you will be expected to enter pricing differently. 
Before I forget, for those vendors who have multiple people registering on Hypro under the same company, I just wanted to remind you guys to submit only one offer to a solicitation unless the solicitation specifically allows more than one offer from the same company. In the case of this solicitation, multiple offers from the same company are not allowed. So if this occurs, then all the offers received from the same company will be rejected. If a response or price submitted does not include all requirements, it is considered not responsive. So if at any time you're not sure if something is required, then please ask the buyer. I also recommend that you use the question and answer tab in Hypro and keep a printout as documentation. If you need help registering, please go to http colon slash slash hiepro.hawaii.gov where I showed you earlier and select the vendor registration video or the vendor registration guide or you can even call the HIC help desk at 808-695-4620. For questions specific to this solicitation, please contact the Hypro buyer, Kevin Takaesu. His number is listed here on the slide. And for general questions about Hypro, you can email hypro at hawaii.gov or call 808-586-0554. Just a special note, I would actually recommend that you email hypro at hawaii.gov if you have a any general questions as there are multiple people who check it during the day versus one person who answers the phone number. So for a faster response, email. Well, that's all I need to cover. So now I'll hand the presentation back over to Kevin and see if there's any questions. Any entity doing business with the state of Hawaii is required to be compliant with state laws. Now, the Hawaii Compliance Express is an electronic system that allows vendors doing business with the state or county agency to quickly and easily obtain proof that they are compliant with applicable laws. The HCE certificate, or Certificate of Vendor Compliance, is submitted in place of the tax clearance, the labor certificate, and a certificate of good standing required in the Hawaii Revised Statute. 103D-310C, and the Hawaii Administrative Rules 3-122-112. Therefore, it is highly recommend, re recommended to register as soon as possible if you have not registered yet. And in most cases, it does take approximately two to three weeks to be compliant on HC. Okay. Additional information. A copy of today's PowerPoint is available at the link shown here. Just click on the link on the hand and excuse me on the handout column and you'll be able to see a copy of this offer pre offer uh, conference. Okay. The next slide will be basically questions. Kevin, do you have one question? Okay. The question is, if we propose on all three functional areas, do we submit one proposal or three? You would submit one proposal. Another question? Yes. Are you planning to cover any questions submitted prior to vendor meeting? Yeah, can you clarify that? Is it submitted through Hypro? Yeah. Yes. The question is, are you planning to cover any questions submitted uh, in HYPO prior to vendor meeting? Yes, we will be covering that through our response in HYPRO to the questions that are submitted through HYPRO and the dates are covered in the significant dates. Another question, uh, can we have a list of participants on this call? 
no, no, that's confidential until the uh, award of the contract. Would you please, uh, Kevin, will you please clarify uh, if you propose more than one functional areas, you need to submit one proposal? Okay. Yes, you still, well, for the three, if you're going to submit for the three functional areas, it's required that you submit one proposal um, and it will be scored, additional points will be scored if um, you are giving multiple proposals. Okay. okay, another question. Are you planning to answer questions in a rolling fashion or just at one time? We are planning to answer question one time. Okay, another question. What areas do the members of the evaluation committee represent? That'll be all the functional areas of the of the proposal. The the special uh, the SMEs. Okay, going back to the functional areas, the multiple functional areas. Uh, they need to be sure that each area is clearly marked, sections and pricing. So if you have function area one, or two, and or three, please make sure your proposals so indicate and the functional areas are clearly marked and priced. Another question, how many members, how many members are in the evaluation committee? There's a minimum of three that would, would be government employees. There actually can be more, uh, including uh, vendors, but a minimum of three would be government employees. OK. Another question, will you independently evaluate each functional area? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question again? Will you independently evaluate each functional area? Yes. But there are additional points for integrated solution. OK. One more question. Will the solution be hosted by the state? If so, do we include all hardware? Uh, the answer is yes. Yes, it will be hosted by the state. And if so, okay. um, hardware will be included. OK, another question. When does the state plan to release the support RFPs for the uh, IV and V and PMO services? Uh, at this moment, uh, we don't know that information, when it's going to be released.
Okay, one more question has popped up. Is there a requirement to manage the system on an interim basis until final acceptance? Well, actually, um, if you could submit this question through the Hypro system, and uh, we will respond to it by that date and time. That was the last question, Kevin. All right. Thank you, Bonnie. Well, if there's no further questions, uh, this concludes the pre-offer conference. And thank you for attending. And a copy, as I mentioned in the last slide, uh, is available um, on our website. Thank you.